Hi, this is Sarah Mikesell with thepigsite.com, and today I'm here with Dr. Patrick Webb. He is the Director of Swine Health Programs with the National Pork Board. So thanks for being with us today, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Very good. So we're talking about diagnostics today, and can you tell me a little bit about how that fits into your role with the National Pork Board? Sure. So at the National Pork Board, I focus mostly on the trade limiting foreign animal diseases and preparedness and education for those for pork producers. And so diagnostics play in a, a very important role because yeah. for these diseases, foot and mouth disease, classical swine fever, African swine fever that we do not have in the United States, we do have a possibility of them showing up at some point. Okay. And so we need to be able to detect these diseases as fast as possible. In order to do that, we've got to have top-notch diagnostics. In our industry today, uh, we see that our producers are moving away from traditional diagnostic testing and moving more towards the oral fluid diagnostic testing. One of our challenges is that the oral fluid tests that are available today, we don't have those validated for oral fluids for the foreign animal diseases. Okay. And so we've been focusing uh, at the pork checkoff on targeting our research dollars towards developing and getting uh, these tests approved so they can be incorporated into our national surveillance programs right. for these foreign animal diseases. Because that, that type of, of test will be easier for the producer. I mean, that's easier for the producer, easier on the operation, it sounds like. Yeah, there's certain uh, advantages to oral fluids testing, uh, ease of use. Uh, yeah. Pigs do the work for you. <laughs> uh, instead of having two people in a barn trying to take samples, you can get by with one. So there's a cost savings there, so those are good. But the primary benefit is that you have a lot of pigs that are interacting with the ropes that they use right. to collect it. So you do a better job of surveillance. If we do a better job of surveillance, we can have earlier disease detection. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that with these validated tests that are available as part of our national programs when producers would submit oral fluid samples, a mm -hmm. subsample could be tested if needed for the foreign animal diseases for early detection. We also are, think it's very important that if we ever, God forbid, had an outbreak right, right. that this type of tool, the oral fluids test, mm -hmm. would be a lot easier for veterinarians and producers to carry out if they had to, to do a national uh, program in order to, to try to see if the disease is spread mm -hmm. from where it's found. Very good. So what's the process to get, to get it validated? Well, uh, what you need to do is you need to get a lot of really smart people. And what <laughs> we've done is we put together an oral fluids research consortium. Yeah. It's got top-notch researchers on it, top-notch companies that make diagnostics on it, as well as uh, top-notch uh, folks from other aspects of the industry, producers as well. And uh, what we've done is uh, our Swine Health Committee has prioritized this and we've gotten checkoff dollars to actually do targeted research proposals Got in it. order to meet our goal. The ultimate goal would be to have these tests approved and, and moved into what's called the National Animal Health Laboratory Network, which is where our surveillance occurs for these foreign animal diseases. So the challenge is, all right, how do you prepare the sample once you collect it? How do you get out uh, the right. DNA and all that good stuff that you need in order to do the diagnostics? And how do they actually work in the tests that are available? Or do we need new tests for it? Mm -hmm. Once you have a, an established protocol and have done the work on the test to try to validate it, at least from a scientific standpoint, then you have to take it to the non-technical service, uh, technical, the non-technical uh, laboratory group and then they have to evaluate basically the package that you present and right. go yay or nay. If it's nay, okay. you, you gotta go back and again? fix this. Yeah. It's usually go back and fix this. Right. If it's yay, then that can be adopted into the null. And so it's a, it's a long process, it can be a long process, yeah. but we also do have representatives from USDA Veterinary Services who are over the null laboratories Got it. Uh, involved in the whole process. Very so good. we're trying to get this really targeted and really going very, very quickly because it's a tool that we need. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Patrick. Thank you very much. This is Sarah Mikesell with thepigsite.com.